Hey, Joyful Journeyer, Anita Adams here, your host. And today I'm so excited to introduce you to Dr. Rulin Shu. I am in awe of and inspired by the incredible work Dr. Shu is doing and can barely wait to dive in and learn more. But first, let me tell you a little bit more about about her. Dr. Rulin Shu is a Berkeley graduate quantum physicist and string theorist. Her life work has been pursuing and sharing the grand unification theory, a theory that uses one mathematic formula to explain everything. Her cutting edge breakthrough research helps integrate science and spirituality at a fundamental level. It leads to an advanced quantum information system that can help people transform at a deeper level, not only physical sickness, but also emotional, mental and spiritual challenges, as well as relationship, financial, intellectual and every aspect of life. Dr. Rulin Shu is also a certified grandmaster teacher and practitioner. Dr. Dr. Shu dedicates her life to empowering the new generation to heal themselves, humanity, and Mother Earth. Her goal is to help them be awakened to discover and utilize their higher potential, greater power, and deeper meaning of their life so that they can enjoy more success, love, happiness, and abundance in life. She is a co-founder of Tao Science and co-author of the books Tao Science and Soul Mind Body Science System with world-renowned spiritual healer, teacher and leader, doctor and master uh, Zhu Jiang Sha. I feel like I'm saying her name wrong. Can you correct me again? Zhu Jiang Sha. Zhu Jiang Sha. Zhu Jiang Sha. Thank you. And author of the book Divine Love. She teaches at Tao Academy and actively presents the wisdom of soul, mind, body, science, and Tao science at scientific and spiritual conferences and worldwide and wor- workshops worldwide. Wow. <laughs> Oh, Dr. Dr. Rulin, thank you so much. And welcome to the Joyful the Joyful Journey podcast. I'm really excited to have you here today. And maybe I actually feel a little nervous, if I must be honest. Like you've just done such an impressive body of work and are doing so many great things to help people really understand and tap into their higher potential. And I just and that speaks to me at a at a deep soul level. So I just feel I feel honored to have this this time with you. So thank you. Thank you from the bottom of my heart for for giving of yourself uh, the time to share your wisdom with us today. Yeah, thank you. I'm very honored to be with you and also with the audience and also your list. Yeah, your audience as well. (laughs) Oh, great, great. Well, I where to start where to start I where I'd like to start is to just ask you what inspired you to pursue this line of work yeah that's a great good question um coming back to the roots yeah and how we get started it's um, so important um i'm glad you asked that question (laughs) because that it's that little seeds and really pushing me you know moving forward actually i've been working on this for more than 40 years and uh um, yeah, so when I was in, when, when I grew up, I was um, talented in science. So my teacher and my parents all pushed me into uh, study science. So I went to one of the uh, best university in China and they, they uh, specialize in training scientists. And uh, um, so, in, in, so in, the, in the college, um, I was in the physics department and um, So I just got fascinated about quantum physics and also, um, you know, to truly understand what the quantum physics means, you know, because quantum physics, we know how to do mathematic calculations, but we don't know what's the meaning of it because Mm -hmm. quantum physics is very strange, you know, and in fact, most physicists, including Einstein, even Nobel laureates like Richard Feynman, you know, and uh, um, in you know almost everyone said they they don't truly understand it you know and uh, uh, also another thing is uh, i was just fascinated by 
what Einstein is doing. One of his dream is that to find the grand unification formula. So grand unification theory is basically use one mathematic formula to explain, describe everything in the world. You know, so it is a very, so that idea somehow really inspired me. You know, I just feel like, wow, I really want to find this. This is so inspiring. You know, I, I, I just, you know, like I want to give my life, you know, everything to find this thing. So, so like since I was 18 years old, I was like, I literally like put all my mind, my, my energy, you know, this is something, my dream, you know, I want to find it. And I studied so hard and, um, uh, so I, after I graduated, I went to UC Berkeley to get my PhD uh, specialized. You know, my research is my thesis is um, grand unification theory. And I studied string theory because um, at that time, maybe still um, at, at that time, the string theory is the top candidate for the grand unification theory. So, yeah, so that is my journey. <laughs> wow, very cool. Um, can you define or explain what's string theory is in a sort of a very, a very simple level or is that yeah too yeah okay. yeah so string theory so they went on the journey to find the grand unification theory one of the things you really want to accomplish is um, so the one is quantum physics one is uh, einstein's general relativity theory you know so one is about you know the electric uh, magnetic field particles and also strong force weak force and then there's einstein's gravity so this two theory they're independent they use different math uh, mathematics different ideas different principles they looks completely independent <laughs> so one of them is trying to bring them together so how to bring them together and so they find that your string theory might be able to do that so string theory is the idea is that if you're trying to look at things at a smaller and smaller level and so string theory says that if you get a small smaller air, air level it is not a dot but it's a string kind of like a violin you know so at, at the smallest level it is a string and the string vibrates right a string vibrates like a violin and so the vibration notes they are the elementary particles and also the vibration notes also gives out um, becomes um, uh, interaction so everything is actually this whole world is basically this violin vibrates the notes, music notes and the makeup of everything we observe so um yeah so it turns out the string theory can um can bring the um you know uh, elementary particles fundamental forces or in, uh, in one uh, mathematic formula. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Thank you. You, you explained that very clearly and concisely. I, I've got a much better understanding of that. I, I want to go back just to your beginnings. Uh, so the science and the, um, uh, the, the quantum physics, grand unification theory, that was a, um, a driving force for you. Uh, were you also always a, uh, a very spiritual um, being? Did you always have a strong spiritual foundation or is that something that grew from your the work that you've done? Yeah, I have to say when I grew up, um, you know, I grew up in China during the Cultural Revolution. So I, we did not have much of like a Buddhist or, um, you know, Christianity, those kind of spirituality. And, you know, we got communist, edu <laughs> you know, education. Um, in some ways, those are spiritual. You know, you are focused on the well-beings of all humanity, you know, and letting go of selfish selfishness. Mm -hmm. And so, I, you know, I think that is one of the things spirituality is teaching us. Mm -hmm. And, uh, um, but on the other hand, I'm not, you know, I... Um, I don't know about open up spiritual channels. <laughs> you know, I know nothing about those. Um, and um, yeah, I, I don't know much about God, you know, <laughs> things like that either. Um, so yeah, so I wasn't, you know, in that sense, I'm not very spiritual. And also I'm doing the science, right? And mm -hmm. being trained as a scientist. So I wasn't, uh, you know, very much in my mind. And uh, I remember actually in the um, college, I was trying to, and also even I was in UC Berkeley, I trying to learn how to meditate. And I find myself very difficult to meditate. <laughs> I couldn't do it. 
<laughs> I feel it's very boring. <laughs> Can be. <laughs> do it. Oh, and and yet the work you do now is about bringing together the, or at least my understanding of the work that you're doing now is bringing together the science and the spiritual realms. Am I correct? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, um, and so my journey actually, uh, I want to maybe tell you a little bit more. Yeah, so, so I got my PhD very easily in UC Berkeley, and afterwards I went to Houston Advanced Research Center, even later went to Harvard, um, to continue my research as a postdoc. And uh, um, but then for a long time I couldn't make the progress I really wanted, and um, I also um, was not satisfied with uh, the approach other scientists are taking. I don't see they can lead to something significant or something make me happy, you know. <laughs> and uh, um, so, actually, if, um, actually, um, I was so frustrated. Actually, I, um, I st actually, um, I stopped doing physics. And there's opportunity come up for me um, to actually uh, get into business. And, and then I moved to Hawaii, actually set up a factory in Hawaii. <laughs> and yeah, and, um, and in Hawaii, um, you know, Hawaii has very uh, amazing uh, spiritual tradition. Mm. So in Hawaii, uh, uh, at that time, I set up a factory to um, manufacture Hawaiian medicinal fruit. Uh, it's this fruit called noni. And uh, so I was uh, working with uh, actually a lot of um, Hawaiian farmers, they, they provide the fruit to me. So I work very closely with them. And uh, um, also, I, I really want to learn what, you know, what, what their culture is. And uh, I also, uh, I get to meet uh, with kahunas and, uh, uh, you know, I really spend time, to, uh, time with them and learning from them. And uh, so that is time. I'm starting my uh, spiritual channel starting to open up. Yeah. And uh, but the, at that time, I already stopped doing physics. And also, it is in Hawaii, I met Dr. and Master Chigang Sha, and, uh, um, you know, my spiritual teacher. And uh, so he and uh, so that is. Um, and so and he was uh, working on the spiritual healing. He's a world renowned soul healer. So he, he helped people to heal their soul. And um, so I was so amazed about his ability to be able to heal people, like literally right in front of you, you know, people in pain, or I even see people blind and start to be able to see, wow. you know, like, yeah, and the people deaf and start to hear. It's like really dramatic healings. Wow. Or people have cancer being healed, and you know, sometimes very quickly. And um, um, yeah, so I was just amazed, you know, or people in pain, you know, cruciating pain, and, and then suddenly there's no pain. Yeah, and so I was so amazed. And also he was teaching very simple, profound wisdoms, you know, he, uh, profound wisdom, but in a very simple terms. And also he teach you how to apply those profound wisdom at this moment to change your life, take your life to the next level. I literally never met anybody, you know, like that, and you know, have tell me to do something like that, you know, and um, and also what has really touched my heart is he completely devoted his life to uh, serve others, to mm -hmm. help others become healthier, happier, more empowered, more enlightened. Mm -hmm. So that really touched my heart. So I remember I went to my friend actually, she's a Kahuna, she. Um, she told me and really persuaded me to go to this, um, you know, Dr. Shah's um, one day workshop in my neighborhood. So I went there and by the end of the workshop, I told him I want to become his student. Mm -hmm. And that end up actually turned out to be uh, one of the best thing I have ever done in my life. Um, that leads me to find the grand unification theory I'm happy about. <laughs> so, oh, so interesting. So it was yeah. working with Dr. Shaw that brought you back into um, yeah, in physics. That's yeah. interesting. Yeah. yeah, because at that time I already stopped doing physics. I wasn't hmm. missing at all. <laughs> <laughs> and I was, and I was enjoying a good life in Hawaii, you know, and <laughs> okay, okay. I, I want to ask you, you just said I wasn't listening at all. What do you mean you weren't listening? Um, um, uh, I wasn't listening. What do you mean? 
Oh, I thought that's what you said, that I wasn't listening at all, that you were just having fun. Did I mishear you? Oh, yeah, I wasn't uh, missing um, doing physics. Oh, I I see. I wasn't missing. Yeah, sorry. Maybe I did not say it very clearly. I I wasn't missing, you know, doing physics. But, you know, at the same time, back in my mind, I was like, you know, I did did so devoted, you know, suddenly I was like completely let it go, you know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, I was wondering about that. But on the other hand, I feel pretty happy about it too, you know. So that was kind of a little bit strange, you know, at that time for me. But um, but it was very interesting is so I was, you know after I met met Doctor Shah, and um, and I um, you know so I so I'm learning about how to do spiritual healing, and uh, also um, to serve others, and um, uh, so I, I go to a lot of Matt, Dr. Shah's um, uh, workshops and healing sessions and retreats. And it's in one of his um, workshop, I was sitting there, you know, um, you know, listening, and then suddenly I got an aha moment. Mm-hmm. And um, uh, I suddenly realized the soul and uh, also the soul can be um, mathematically described scientifically, can oh. be scientifically studied. Yeah. And, <laughs> and it's just very clear, clear, you know, back. very yeah. interesting. Yeah, because before that, I was wondering, you know, if Master Shah would, he would teach about the soul. He said, in the soul is a light being, you know, and everybody, you can see their soul. I cannot see. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes I can see, but most time I don't see, you know. Um, so I'm wondering, like, but yeah, I, some, I'm wondering, like, you know, can I actually use, science, you know, science to at least understand it somehow? And, but I didn't give too much attention. Um but suddenly one, you know, once just one day just become very clear, I understood it. <laughs> wow, really neat. Well, well, let's dive into some of the work that you've been doing then. Um, you talk about in the article that you co-wrote, uh, you talk about uh, the solar spirit mm-hmm. and the, the spiritual heart and the mind as three separate parts of our being that work mm-hmm. together to shape our reality. So yes. let's start with, um, with you defining what you mean by soul or spirit and the spiritual heart. Yeah, yeah. So that is my insight. And also later together with Master Shah, we made it um, uh, more clear and we wrote our book. So basically, um, we find that so quantum physics is actually is the um, is a science actually can um, about the soul, about the spiritual heart. So quantum physicists don't understand quantum physics because they don't understand so they don't yeah. understand spiritual heart. That's why they don't understand quantum physics. They can do mathematic calculations, but they don't understand what that what that means because they don't understand so. Okay. So when I was doing science because I don't understand so at that time, you know, so I can understand quantum physics. And so I was very lucky. I think it's maybe somehow universe arranged it. You know, I meet Master Shah because when I study physics, what really, what really I want to understand is quantum physics. You know, I studied all kind of philosophies, even psychology, because I realized just um, physics, you know, mathematics itself cannot understand quantum physics. Uh, what that really means. So I studied, um, studies, you know, philosophy, psychology, and, you know, all kinds of things. Uh, but I still cannot understand it. And so that is a dream, like, for so many years, you know, I really want to understand, I really cannot, you know, it's very frustrating. <laughs> do, you, do you feel like you still don't understand soul? Yeah, but or? now I, com- I completely understand. Okay, yeah. so tell yeah. us what your definition is of and of the soul, and how do you measure? Yeah, yeah. So basically, so uh, it's actually you need to use quantum physics. You, um, so this, you, when you understand so, it help you to understand quantum physics. And mm-hmm. with that, quantum physics, it's developed this mathematics and the scientific framework to really help you understand the soul in a scientific way. So what we uh, find is that actually this is a, I just recently um, wrote a part article um, paper and also become um, be, uh, be accepted for publishment, publishing is called um, quantum theory of the consciousness. So mm-hmm. this is also this uh, is also um, presented in the Dao Science uh, book. So basically is that, um, so quantum physics d- 
discovered that everything is a vibrational field, right? So this field um, is made of vibrations. So what is vibration? Vibration is basically periodic oscillation, yeah? And then they travel and it's filled up the whole space. And um, so this oscillation um, be described by frequency, you know, how fast it oscillates, and also wavelengths is how long is this, um, you know, this vibration is, and also how tall the amplitudes and the velocities. So, uh, so everything is a vibrational field, actually. So everybody is a field, it extends over space and time, has all kinds of vibrations inside our field. Right. So this is actually at the deepest level what each one of us is really made of. The, these vibrations. Yeah, vibrational field. A vibrational field. Okay. Yeah. So kind of like, you know, the hippie says good vibes, you know, yeah. it's, it's kind of that, that is actually talking about the quantum physics language. Oh, so they're actually very tuned in. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So they did they got something right. Yeah. And uh, so um, so the vibes, and then this vibration carries three things. And uh, one thing is um, the matter. So matter is something we can measure, we can observe, we can experience, you know, like this book, I can measure, I can touch it, I can feel it, or I can read it, yeah. And uh, so this is a physical reality, right? And the second is the energy. Energy is something that moves and change the matter. Yeah, so this is basically a definition also in physics, how to define what is energy. And then third thing, third thing is um, information. Yeah, information is what informs. Mm -hmm. And information gives form and shape to energy and matter. So information is, um, um, so although everything you can see is a matter, but the information is actually what is hidden, cannot be seen, invisible, but it actually determines energy and matter. So information in our field, you know, is what uh, really determines every aspect of our life, including, mm -hmm. you know, um, when we are born, right? That's the information, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, when are we going to get married, right? And um, what kind of health we have, what kind of a job we might have, what kind of family we may have, all of this information, including a lot of, you know, zillions of information about our life is stored in our quantum field. Okay. And that they secretly determines our life. Okay. Is that, is that the content that you're talking about in your- Yeah, yeah. So article? the content information we find that is basically the soul. The soul right. is basically content of information that is in our vibrational field. Okay. Mm -hmm. And, and that includes, um, so you, you talk about your, um, when you're born, um, I guess your genetics too, is that part of? Yeah, that's part of the information, everything okay. about the information. Yeah. Anything about information. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's all fact based stuff is information. Um, information um it's uh, information is uh you know facts has information what we have done has information when we think we have information right and when we feel we also there's certain information determines that okay so everything oh. we do there's information okay everything we do is information okay interesting okay i got it everything in life there's some information behind it right mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. okay very interesting so okay. there's three aspects they're always together and uh, it's just three different aspects about our existence. Right. Yeah. So people, okay. you know, people don't know about this. They only, most people just see the matter, right? And they don't even see the energy. But um, some people realize energy is also important. They actually determine, you know, um, mm -hmm. change. They, can, they are the one change and move the matter. Right. So, they, you know, grant more people realize energy is important. But okay. then... What do we tell people? What is really important is the information. Right. Because information determines your life. Okay. And that information can change because the information. Right. right. Is, you can change it. Right. Okay. Any moment. Well, yeah. Okay. That's really, and I, will, I want to come back to that. So we're just going to, we'll, we'll earmark mm -hmm. that. Um, spirit, um, spirit heart. Talk about that. Yeah, so, so information has three aspects, right? So one is the content of the information, which is a spirit. 
so the content information um, so that's why spirit is very important the soul is very important information determines everything so information is the soul is the essence you know okay. and hold, hold, hold on one second spirit and soul you're using those two words interchangeably yeah we, we take them as same thing okay i just want to make so sure. you know you can take it different it depends okay. on your definition you know okay. so we um we you know we trying to give everything um specific scientific definition yeah. you know so that soul you can calculate it you know and um mm, yeah Okay, got it. Okay, so carry on. So spirit. Yeah. Spirit so the, the information has three aspects. First is a soul, and the second is the rec. You know, the con well, first is content information, which is a soul. Second is the receiver of the information, right? And um, so, like antenna, you know. Um, so if you just have the information out there, if you don't receive it, you know, it does not mean anything, right? Mm -hmm. And so you need like an antenna or something to receive the information. And then, um, and then their third one is a processor of the information. That is, so the receiver information for us, we realize is a spiritual heart and the processor of the information is a mind. And um, so, um, so the soul, spiritual heart and the mind is a three aspect about the information. Okay, um, and I like, I like the term spiritual heart. Now, did you land on that because a spiritual heart suggests an open heart to be able to receive? Is that, that's the, that's the connection I'm making to the term spiritual heart. Is that what? Yeah, you yeah. Spiritual heart is basically means that you can um, um, open the heart to, to receive. Right. You know? And, uh, you know, in fact, there's energy information right here, right now. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, any any information about the whole universe is right here right now. It's all quantum field. And also, and so if you have your spiritual heart is open, you can receive the energy, you can receive the wisdom, you can receive the abundance, you can receive love. And so we, if you can really use your spiritual heart, literally you can manifest um, anything. Okay, and I, I find that really fascinating, and I want to dive into that um, some more. Maybe that's part of the, the answer to um, the next question I want to ask you. So uh, in your bio, you say your goal is to help people be awakened to discover and utilize their higher potential or greater power. Obviously, you know, to me anyways, awareness of our true potential is the first step. So how do we go from there though? Like you can, it's one thing is to have this awareness that, that we can, we can manifest. We have the, we have the potential and the ability to manifest, but then how do we actually tap into that higher potential and greater, greater power? What is there a, a process to open the heart? Maybe that's the question. Is there a process to open the heart? So we receive the information we need to then Mm -hmm. create the reality we want right right exactly that is uh, the key point right so our when you realize your quantum being and this whole vibrational field is right you are the whole vibra infinite vibrational field right and it connected with the the universal vibrational field the whole universe is literally at your feet and uh, right inside your head and for you to manifest right to create anything you want this is the, the no limits right what you can manifest so but the key is we need to use our heart like you said open our heart yeah. to do it so what is the process the process um so this is what you know i teach people you know I, every day and um <laughs> Yes, so and to to open the heart and literally like even Buddha and um, was it teaches you know and uh, everything coming from your heart. So um, even how you look, everything is from your heart. So so but how we can open our heart. Um, so we we have actually a formula um, in um, uh, in Tao science how to do it. So how you do it uh, first to realize. You know, um, is our body is the um, is the, actually the receiver. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so basically to to receive from this quantum universal quantum field, you need to um, 
to be able to, you know, so, so our body, you know, we need to turn on our receivers, right? What is a receiver? Like radio has an antenna to receive, right? Receive from um, the information from, you know, the um, electromagnetic field, and then you can play the radio program, right? And so, so we need to turn on our receiver. So what is our receiver, right? What is our antenna? And our antenna, it turned out to be at this moment, is this physical body. Mm -hmm. uh, so are this physical body, and so how can you receive from this um, quantum field is um, you, you receive it is um, this physical process is called resonance. You uh, resonate f with this um, universal vibrational field, and then, and then you will be able to absorb um, some uh, vibrations so this vibrations carries the information and also energy you know so you can get a lot of energy if you know how to resonate from this whole universe you know i guess that's the question then isn't it how do you resonate from the the universe you know a lot of people teach meditation is the way you said you don't like meditating because it it's boring <laughs> so what 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 is that how do we do that better that we can resonate with the universe or is that really unique to every individual like for me i i know i find i resonate with the universe when i go for a walk in nature like i feel mm -hmm. connected to my environment to god to source to to my higher self when i get yeah. really connected to being in nature mm -hmm. yeah. um, but some people don't find that they they need to meditate or do what have another way to go. So I guess my question yeah. there is, is it unique to each individual? And it, therefore, is it our, our job to figure out how to how we're going to resonate with the universe with using our unique instrument? Um, yeah, so definitely, you know, this, this is the most important thing in life. There's mm -hmm. nothing more important than this, literally, you know, it's as important as you eat food, mm -hmm. actually, even more important than eating food. Because if you can receive energy from the universe, there are people they don't need to eat. You know what I mean? If you really I have this energy, they can eat. They really. can full of energy. You know? Yeah. Okay. And the, the person like like this exists everywhere. You know? I mean, not everywhere, but definitely exists. You know? We heard about them, and mm -hmm. um, you know, and uh, so uh, so this is the most important thing, literally. So. Um, of course, you know, we all have certain abilities to do that. And in fact, our body automatically doing that, you know, it's a resonance is a, it's a natural phenomena, our body is already doing it. But the problem is, we um, as a human beings, we give ourselves negative information, mm. we stop ourselves receiving, you know, yeah. receiving from the universe, you know, we, we say this is not good. And, mm. uh, you know, you know, I don't want this. And, uh, you know, I'm not good enough. So by giving ourselves this negative information, we stop ourselves to connect with the universe. And in one way or another, you know, some way we're more connected. But in some other ways, we literally cut it off, right. And um, especially um, in some some of stuff, you know, in some area, if we are we are sick or have difficulties and challenges, it's usually always, you have some blockages in that aspect of your life you don't you're not receiving mm. you are um pushing things away you know um, either you know um, consciously or unconsciously right. so um so healing for me is the most important part is really activate our heart yeah so we, we have a process and teach people how to do it okay. and uh, first is go inside the body to realize our body is a receiver a resonator, right? Um, and then second is Wait, hold um, on. so to go inside the body. So that's um, quieting the mind through various ways to go in, go inward, looking inward. That's what you yes, heard. yes. You, you mentioned about quiet mind. That is <clears throat> one of the most important part. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yes, yeah. yes. But <laughs> the key is how to quiet mind, right? Yeah, yeah. And uh, you know, the mind is not like you say, be quiet. You know, you can be yeah. quiet, right? Yeah. For most people, they cannot do that. And so there, there, there's techniques how to help people to get there. 
And meditation again is just one technique. Yeah, right? just one of them. Are yeah. there are there many techniques? I, many, I yeah, know. many oh. many techniques. Can, and, can uh, you give us just an example of of maybe just a few more techniques? Because I think most people think of quieting the mind and meditating, and they're like automatically go that I can't do that. I can't sit still for you know twenty minutes or whatever, and then they yeah they, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, exactly. So that is why uh, we don't teach people just quiet their mind. We, we have a specific technique um, to help people, um, you know, without asking people to quiet the mind, but be, if you just follow us to do it and they, you know, and their mind become quiet and peaceful and also even more than that, you, right. you said, you know, you can, you can go into a state feeling like, complete peace, complete oneness uh, with the whole universe. Mm -hmm. Is is that a, like a guided? Um, like... So there, there's many techniques. Yeah, we have many techniques. Um, Give me yeah. a couple. <laughs> so I'd be happy to, sh to share with a few of, with few of them with you, that's for yeah. sure. Yeah, that would be yeah. So that there's so um, yeah, we have uh, many techniques. Um, you know, we, the body technique. Yeah, body technique. One of the very important techniques is the breathing technique. And uh, even breathing technique, there's many many breathing techniques. Yeah. You know, and so, um, and we have uh, um, also. Um, mm, yeah, if you want, I can do some demo and uh, we can just, uh, you know, do some, do some of, uh, share with, you know, breathing technique. Okay. And also we use um, some chanting technique and also Tao calligraphy, you know, like behind oh, me, this yeah. is the Tao calligraphy. So Tao calligraphy, Tao is um, the source, you know, like a Tao signs. Tao is a source and um, Tao signs, the signs about the source. So this uh, oneness quantum field yeah and so Tao calligraphy is uh, cal um, calligraphy you know it's kind of art form and so we in this um, Tao calligraphy is actually a very unique uh, one stroke Chinese calligraphy and um, so we um, so this calligraphy we is a portal to um, to bring the source positive information energy and matter um, to help us to remove the negative information, energy, and matter. Right. So in the end, all the you know busy mind, um, you know uh, negative thoughts or even positive thoughts, all of those actually because of the uh, negative information in your field. They're just trying to distract you right. from who you are and to connect with the source and to connect with grand unified field, <laughs> and so that you can be completely empowered and um, centered and uh, supported uh, in whatever you want to accomplish, you know? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so we have uh, many, many techniques. Awesome. And, mm -hmm. So it's, it's really, again, I guess I just want to presence this, that uh, it's a matter of finding a technique that works for you. So you can try a number of different things to go inside the body. And again, that's the first, the first thing that you need to do to, to mm -hmm. activate that, that, mm -hmm. um, uh, manifestation process, right? That's what we're saying. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah, I, I, exactly. got the, I got the yeah. general and, idea. Uh, they really need to get into the heart rather than go into the mind, you know, and I realize so a lot of people, most people, you know, is in the mind. If yeah. you're completely in the mind, you, you will be like a computer. You stay in the same place, you know, and <laughs> thinking, 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 but not getting anywhere. Yeah. You know, I have people, they always thinking and they don't have energy and their life was stuck, not getting anywhere, you know, but when you learn how to use your spiritual heart, you suddenly have a lot of inspirations and making progresses and uh, full of energy, full of vitality, you know, your life's really starting to be, you know, go and make profound transformations and happiness and also um, discoveries. Yeah. Right. Because you know, you have, yes, you you can receive things. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So again, the first the first step to and how to use your spiritual heart is to go inside your body. What's, yes. what's the next step? Yeah. So go inside your body and just connect with your body. And um, so a lot of people, this is actually you know, for some people, this is very difficult. You know, <laughs> most people are just completely outside their body, and you know, that's why they're not grounded. You know, and so you know, so we. We um, so we, we use breathing to help you really go inside your body, and um, to connect with your body, 
and then go inside your body starting to observe you know to be aware you know aware of your breath you know a, a breath like you breathe in you know and the breath coming inside your body how do you you know follow your breath be aware go inside your body to be aware of what's happening inside your body you know and to go inside your body observe your body and also observe your thoughts aware of your thoughts aware of your emotions feelings sensations inside and be aware and next level and observe them and and then next level observe the sensation observe everything and the next level is you feel it the, the, the key is go inside your body really feel it when you can go inside your body start to feel you're literally receiving the uh, resonance yeah mm -hmm. i have i have experienced that um and more and more i've been experiencing that sense of to me, it feels like expansion. It feels like when I'm receiving, I literally feel like my my heart center is expanding. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And it just it feels well, the word is expansive. It just it feels like there's yeah. something inside me growing. And it's such a Exactly, exactly. Feeling. Exactly. Yeah. Because that's who you really are, you know? Yeah. And then you're really starting to connecting with this universal vibrational field and receiving from that and become one with that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's why, you know, you feel expanding because that is really you. Yeah. yeah, you go back to your true self and connect with that universal field. Beautiful. Yeah, I, I don't always get that. I don't always get into that space because I got so much going on up here and I'm like, just stop. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that is basically our training with people, you know, need to go into your heart. Yeah. And, uh, um, and you know, trying to even live that every moment, and then you yeah. realize actually, every moment, and you can actually accomplish millions of times more than you. You you are so busy with your mind. Yeah, yeah. And literally I'm, millions, billions of more. Yeah. You actually, if you in your mind, you actually cannot accomplish anything. You just you're just being busy, but you're not really accomplishing anything. You yeah. actually get yourself exhausted and you damage your health, yeah. you know? And, uh, but if you can go into your heart, and like you said, and you suddenly become expensive, there's, and then suddenly you have inspiration, suddenly you have yeah. aha moments that really can solve huge problems, you right. know? Yeah, and, and I have that, I have experienced that in those moments where it's like an idea comes to me and I'm like, ah, that's what I gotta do now. That's my next thing that I need yes, to do. Yes, yes. I call that, um, well, I, I titled that my Whispers of the Soul, which is I've named what I named my book, Whispers of the yes. Soul. It's that being in that moment of expansion where you hear and yes. receive the guidance on how to, mm -hmm. how to move forward with something or how to be. How. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. I love that you're doing this work. I love it. Okay. I'm just going to reiterate. Um, so th this is like a, a, a forced a four step process if I wrote it all down correctly on mm -hmm. how to use your your spirit heart heart or how to tap into your spirit heart mm -hmm. is to go inside your body and you can do that through any number of different techniques there's so many different techniques that are out there to help you get centered into your body find one that works for you mm -hmm. connect with your body which is your instrument observe your body yeah. go inside inside be aware observe yeah. and feel mm -hmm. right and then and feel and then allow um and just feel so you're observe you're being aware then you're observing and then you're you're feeling those are like three tangible things that you can do when you're in your body mm -hmm. is have i missed anything is there anything else that we need to yeah. allow for yeah. so that's basically the steps but the important thing is um you know, because everybody has uh, negative information mm -hmm. um, through, you know, through long history of your, your life, you know. And um, so even you go inside, you might not, and you might feel actually, you know, I, I, I guide people doing this. They literally uh, have people go inside themselves. They feel darkness, they feel um, hell, they feel pain. Mm -hmm. So um, so how to deal with that, you yeah. know, and uh, so we use uh, calligraphies and also use um, very deep teachings how to get people actually uh, by going through them and sometimes very quickly and actually they feel empowered. And um, so I literally have people, they are in cruciating pain and or 
um, they're going through terrible things in life. And then um, through this technique, I go have them go inside, be aware, observe and feel, and their all their pains gone. Or right. um, they go inside, they feel this horrible uh, depression, anxiety, and by going through our techniques, and all of that be gone. And then their life, they suddenly their life become better. And because and that technique is that's the the Dao uh, uh, calligraphy calligraphy Dao calligraphy combined with uh, how to use the heart. Yeah, okay. so this is something. Um, it's very profound, and uh, um, so you know I've been teaching this for a long time, and mm -hmm. I have a following, and my students will, you know, some some of them they 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 learned a little bit, and they they apply, they really worked, um, but they still can. You know, there's different levels. You know, because our heart can be so huge, right? Mm -hmm. And the uh, the limits, there's no limits how much we can receive. You know, there because this whole universe is our limits. Mm -hmm. You know, so our heart, our spiritual heart, has many many layers. How you can go deeper and deeper layer to become more and more magical, right? Mm -hmm. Being and so that that is really our lifelong journey, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, so so you know, so although it sounds so simple, yeah, be uh, go in, go in, connect with our body, go inside the body, and then go be aware of what's happening inside, observe and feel. Yeah. So maybe everybody can do that. How about I, I, I lead you on do something like this? I would yeah? love that. Okay. Yeah. All right. mm -hmm. Okay. So you can close your eyes. Have a deep breath. Breathe into your lower abdomen. So when you breathe in, notice the air coming through your nose. Going through your throat to the lower abdomen. So be aware of all of that and also be aware of the, the breathing to the lower abdomen, aware of what's happening inside your lower abdomen, how your lower abdomen, you know, when the air come into your lower abdomen, how that breath make your lower abdomen react. So observe your lower abdomen, observe the, the breath, and also go inside your body, feel. Feel the sensations that breath make, make your body to react. So what's the reaction in your body? So some part of body may be tight, maybe a little bit pressure, just be aware of the, all those sensations. Also aware of the thoughts that's coming up, emotions coming up. So aware everything that's coming up inside your body. Go inside your body, be aware, and observe all of them. And continue breathing to the lower abdomen. Put attention in the lower abdomen. And feel, go inside yourself, be aware, observe, and feel. Feel the sensations that's inside your body. Any sensations, feelings coming up, you feel them. If the thoughts coming up, be aware of the thoughts, observe the thoughts, observe how the thoughts makes your body feel, which part of the body makes you, the thoughts cause any sensations. Go into that part of the body Feel those sensations. So be aware, observe, and feel. Aware, observe, and feel. Aware, observe, and feel. Aware, observe, and feel. So another thing is very important is some starting to tell yourself some positive information. Because whether you want it or not, there's some uh, negative information is controlling your life. So um, you can start to tell you some positive information. One of the positive information in Tao science is this grand unification formula. S plus E plus M equals one. 
which means that bring your soul, heart, mind, energy, and matter, body as one. So when you chant this, it can help you to bring your soul, heart, mind, and body as one. So you can right now maybe do some chanting to help you um, to go deeper, to um, remove the blockages inside, uh, the neg remove the negative information in your field so that you can start to, um, to align your soul, heart, mind, and body to further open your heart to be able to feel more. So you can chant together with me. S plus E plus M equals 1. 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 So now you can also chant silently. Really go inside your body, really feel. Be aware, observe, and feel. So this positive information is starting to align your soul, heart, mind, energy, and body together. So go inside yourself, feel, be aware, observe, and feel. Go deeper, go inside body, be aware, observe and feel. Aware, observe and feel. Aware, observe and feel. So if your mind is busy, you can just start to chant S plus E plus M equals one. And then go inside your body, trying to be aware, observe and feel. If you have hard time to feel, just feel your breath. Be aware, observe, and feel your breath. So that can be a starting point for you to be able to be aware, observe, and feel. Continue go inside, be aware, observe, and feel. Aware, observe, and feel. Aware, 
observe and feel. Yeah, so this is a, one of the practice. If you want, I'd be happy to give you a blessing from Tao calligraphy to help you to go deeper to be able to aware, observe, and feel. Yeah, yeah because we all, that. you know, how much you can be aware, observe, and feel and receive from the universal field, the source field. Everybody's different, you know. Mm -hmm. um, depends on, you know, if you have blockages, negative information. You just block you. You cannot receive, even you want to. You know, mm -hmm. some people cannot even like feel their breath. You know, <laughs> or or even go inside to feel. You know, literally, mm -hmm. some people even have a hard time going inside the body because the mm -hmm. trauma is so huge. They they literally dare not go inside the body. So I have to give them the blessings, help them to remove those negative information, so that they they can go inside the body. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Um, so they're di everybody's different. You know the yeah. layers. Layers. And, it, and is the, is the blessing the same for everybody, or is that a, a unique to each individual that you you work with? Mm, it's um yeah. So the source field, you know, source field is uh, working on everyone according to um. You know, the source contains everything. So everybody, source is complete love, compassion, and the positive positive information. Mm -hmm. You know, um, source is the same. You know, and there's only one source, um, but what you can receive from it is different. Okay. Mm -hmm. how, how do you do? How are you feeling? How about you? What's your yeah. experience in that practice? Yeah, thank you for asking, and I, I'd like to share. Um, yeah, so a, a, a number of different things um, happened for me within that um, session. Um, first off, uh, really focusing on the breathing, I could feel it in my throat. I like, I like that feeling and I can feel it in my belly and the expansion and started the awareness of what am I feeling in my body and I and I noticed I'm um, sort of a discomfort in my back right shoulder like lower back right shoulder and there's kind of like a little bit of a pain there and then we did the the the, the chant and the meditation and um, when we came no when we came out of the chant I stopped doing the chant and you asked us to to um, what are your body feeling I wasn't feeling that pain in my shoulder my back shoulder anymore I'm like that's interesting and I, I just was folk, trying to focus on can I get that feel that pain is it is that just my imagination and it's interesting to me that I almost did not want to accept that I could e so easily dissipate that that pain and the pain didn't didn't come back but I I had a, a just like huh that's really interesting and maybe it's my imagination was that <laughs> the thought that I immediately went to and then like, then no um I really I liked that that ch that chant and at first I felt this is kind of silly s plus um, what is it s plus e plus m equals one and then I kind of I clued into what that you know um, what that is and that just that idea of the oneness I was going to ask you if if that chant specifically is just intended to re realize that it is that we are one that is it is this one universal field that we are all part of. Is that the intention of that, that chant? Yeah, no. yeah this um, formula is, yeah, that is a part of it, you know, but another mm -hmm. part is to bring your own soul, heart, mind, energy, and a body as one. It, because a lot of people, you know, they're not one, you know, their mind is something else, yeah, their heart yeah, yeah. somewhere else, their soul is, you know, another level, and their mm -hmm. body is some, well, you know, they're not one. So that's why people get sick and have difficulty and challenges. Okay, super interesting. I really, I really like that. And I, I guess what I'm trying to say is, again, my mind went, well, that's kind of a weird chant. <laughs> and then I started to feel that connection to the the whole thing. I'm like, okay, there's something to this wisdom. I like that. I, I'm gonna and I'm gonna imply that. And then the the, the final piece for me, um, and this I know is mine to work on. Um, I started to feel. I came out because I was feeling self-conscious about the extended silence 
on a podcast and my brain got into the way with, with yeah, everything. Right, right. So it just, yeah. just interesting how that, how, when our mind starts to get involved, mm -hmm. overly yeah. involved, mm -hmm. how it shuts you down. Because I, I, I just, I stopped feeling that connection. So just, yeah. and, a, and I guess that's an awareness piece. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. so yeah. next time I do this, I'll do it on, on my own and, and see um, how, how far I can go with that. So I'm yeah, excited. Yeah. Thank you for sharing those, those, um, that technique with us. It's really cool. Now, what's the blessing? <laughs> yeah, the blessing, you know, you see this Tao calligraphy I can show you here. Oh, yeah. This okay. is another Tao calligraphy. And um, so I could let this, so you can close your eyes. Um, I can give a blessing from this Tao calligraphy to help you to open your spiritual heart more, um, to be able to receive more. Yeah. Yay. So, so yeah, just close your eyes and give you, so close your eyes. So Tao calligraphy, greatest love. Could you please give beloved Anita a blessing to further open her uh, spiritual heart to receive and connect with the whole universe? Blessing start. Thank you. <laughs> Do you notice anything? I notice a, a lightness, mm -hmm. love, a feeling of love mm -hmm. and gratitude. I feel very gra grateful for you right this moment and this opportunity <laughs> to learn from your wisdom. I feel, I feel lit up. I feel it. I feel beautiful, it. beautiful. Yeah. yeah, I really see your heart is starting to open up more shiny, more light. You know, so that's one thing is uh, when your spiritual heart is open up, you're receiving, you can receive more light. You can also radiate more light, mm. you know? Yeah. Because when you receive, then you can radiate, you know, you cannot just radiate, radiate, and then, then you don't have any more, right? And uh, <laughs> so, so the spiritual heart, you can receive and radiate and more. Yeah. So I, I noticed like, it's like the uh, beautiful petal is starting to open up and uh, also a deeper level, um, the portals and the channels um, is um, opening up also. Yeah, so that's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Yeah. Oh, thank you so much, Dr. Roland. I really, I love this, this discussion we had. I feel like we've barely skim the surface of uh, of it all and yet i feel more expansive myself and i and i know there are listeners who this will touch as well if somebody wanted to um learn more about you or take i know you offer different courses and and things that that uh you have and you've got books etc what's the best way for somebody to connect with you yeah so I offer healing sessions, uh, consultations, and I also offer, uh, yeah, a lot of courses, Tao Science courses uh, at the Tao Academy. So um, Tao Academy, and also you can find uh, my information on drsha.com. And uh, I'd be happy, you know, I, I uh, give people healing sessions and um, consultation sessions, Great. and also, yeah, courses and uh, yeah. We also have um, Dao Science Facebook. You can also, we, we do the grand unification um, oh. practice every week. And you can also join us doing that. So that is not only for us to align our soul, heart, mind, and body together, and but also help Mother Earth and humanity uh, so that we can all align um, as one. So then there will be more love, peace, and harmony for all of us. Oh, I love that. That that speaks to my soul. I will check that out myself as well. So that's Dow Science Facebook 
is yeah. that the name of the group or okay or it's on facebook I'll, I'll get the links from you and we'll put them in the show notes so okay. anybody who wants to access this information will know how to how to reach you and do that one final question about um uh, working with you can people um work with you online um or is it a do they have to be in the same city with you yeah to- yeah uh, online i see clients all over the world mm-hmm. wonderful yeah, yeah. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Rulin. I really enjoyed our, our time together and uh, I, I feel blessed. I feel the, the lightness that you brought into our conversation and, and it was immensely, immensely enjoyable. So thank you. And Joyful Journeyer, I hope you enjoyed this episode as well. Please do check out uh, Dr. Rulin's uh, website, uh, her information where you can f- learn more about the work she's doing, maybe participate in the Tao Science, uh, Tao Science Facebook page. Um, yeah, just explore because there's there's a lot of wisdom in what she is sharing and it's uh, it's beautiful. It's really beautiful work. And if, if you know anybody that uh, you feel this episode would resonate with, please share it spread the love we're we're here to try to um raise the collective consciousness and the more people that tune in and listen to uh, the show and connect with some of the amazing guests that we bring here the greater the reach we'll have the greater the impact we'll have in in shifting uh shifting that and raising that collective consciousness so thank you again and we'll catch you next time bye for now